Hi guys and welcome to this week's video. Apologies that this video is up later than usual, I've been very busy this week and this drawing took a lot longer than I anticipated. So as many of you may have guessed by the thumbnail or video title, in this video I'll be drawing a self-portrait. And I guess this sort of means that it's a face reveal, seeing as it's a self-portrait. I'll also be going over my process, as well as some other things that are worth considering when completing your own portraits. Um, I'm no portrait expert though by any means, so of course interpret my advice as you wish. And before I begin talking about the advice, I just wanted to apologise in advance for the changes in lighting. The uh, sun wasn't really playing fair whilst recording and I had to keep changing my lighting setup to compensate. Unfortunately there are also some cuts and jumps in the footage, but I'll explain and point those out as I go along hopefully. So anyway, on to the advice. My first piece of advice would be to start off with a very accurate sketch of the subject matter. In my case I used a tracing as it expedited the whole process and it meant that I was sure that my start uh, is as accurate as it possibly could be. Human portraiture can be exceedingly difficult because it only takes something to be the tiniest fraction in the wrong place or the wrong size for it to change the way that the person looks entirely. As humans we are experts in analysing faces and expressions as well as being able to recognise people so uh, we are very critical of these things and it really doesn't take very much at all for us to notice that um, something is off. And uh, as humans that are also artists, it can be very difficult to work out why something doesn't look quite right. So a tracing helped out immensely in my case, as it reduced the time I spent labouring over measuring everything. Um, and it also meant that I could use the tracing nearing completion of the piece to make sure that the features hadn't sort of migrated during the colouring process. Tip number two would be to use mediums that offer large and even coverage, at least to start off the piece with. So uh, watercolour, alcohol based markers or inks are some good, example of these, good examples of these kinds of mediums. Using such mediums will reduce the time you spend trying to cover the white of the paper if you're using colour pencils for example. And because colour pencil is quite a slow medium it will save you a lot of time in the long run too. In my case, I used uh, alcohol-based markers for this piece, but I have also had good results before with watercolour, and I found that using watercolour was really easy to uh, achieve nice, even gradients of colour too. That reminds me, um, for this piece, I used uh, Canson Moulin du Roy watercolour paper, which I found held up really well to all the mediums that I used during the creation of this piece. So for the base layers of the skin, I used three or four very pale skin tones from my marker sets that I thought best reflected the lightest values in my skin on my reference photo. I used the slightly darker tones uh, to mark in where the shadows were and I also used a very pale purple to cool off the sort of warm yellowy orangey tones um, and mark in where the darker shadows were, so for example around the eyes. And this leads me on to tip number three, which is to consider using lots of different colours when drawing skin, and not just the go-to sort of standard skin colours like pinks, tans and peaches. Using colours such as blue and purple can really help to build up a level of realism. Um, this is because skin is slightly transparent and red blood vessels appear blue. Um, I believe because only high energy short wavelength light can bounce through the layers of skin and flesh. So by introducing um, lots of cooler, paler colours such as um, blues and purples that can help give the illusion that the skin is sort of transparent. It's also worth considering your subject surroundings when drawing skin. So uh, in my case, later on in the drawing, I'll very lightly layer even more purpley pinks and blues to certain areas of my face because uh, my background contains these bright colours. Because my skin is quite pale and the reference photo that I'm using was also very brightly lit, if I was to stand in a really brightly lit room next to those sort of purpley blue colours, they would be reflected light from those colours and they would be visible on my face. I hope that makes sense. Tip number four is on a different theme altogether. Um, it's about considering the purpose of your portrait. So uh, for me, I drew this portrait as I wanted to create a more personal icon for my art pages online, so uh, YouTube, Facebook and Instagram in particular. 
So this means that in most inst instances, uh, this drawing will be only seen as a very small icon or avatar. And um, as a result, whilst I worked and planned the piece, I had to consider how easily certain details would be seen and also the level of contrast across the piece. I actually end up having to tweak the painting quite considerably after scanning it and resizing. Um, because then I realised that the piece looked immensely different um, as a tiny little icon or avatar as it does at normal size. So for instance, a lot of the subtle shading that I did around the jaw and cheeks uh, was lost altogether and because of this my avatar looked very shapeless and kind of goofy looking and as you can imagine I wasn't particularly happy with the way that um, I came across in that uh, drawing. So of course I had to change it and to counter it I sharpened up the shadows and darkened them up quite considerably. I also had to change the hair a great deal because to start off with I'd sort of drawn it in with a lot of contrast but um, viewed as a tiny icon the hair was very distracting and, I made, and, it, and it made it difficult to see uh, my face itself. Unfortunately a lot of these adjustments that I made I did off camera so I'm sorry for that. The other consideration that I had made for this piece, um, I made actually before I started. So knowing that this piece would be viewed small and I would complete it in a realistic style, I wanted to make sure that it wouldn't be interpreted as a, a photograph. I'm not trying to say that my art is quite at that level of realism, but uh, these things can be hard to tell when they're really small. So to counter this, I decided that I wanted the background to be quite bright and painterly and sort of abstract. So to achieve this effect, I did lots of wet on wet watercolour washes and I also dripped watercolour down my painting to add some interesting texture. To do this, I taped my portrait down to a board and I tilted it up after putting some droplets of colour at the top of the paper. I would have really liked to record this because it was um, such a fun sort of process but it was really difficult to record so once again I'm sorry uh, that this wasn't shown in the video. So the final tip that I have for you guys is number five and that is to really study the areas of shadows and highlights on the face. This is because these are really key in describing form and anatomy as well as expression. So uh, for example in my case there were lots of subtle shadows under the apples of my cheeks and around the edges of my chin and jaw. If I had left these out, my kind of smirky little smile wouldn't have read very well. And um, on a similar note, folds and skin creases are also important to show, but try avoiding drawing them in as solid lines and instead try and define them by thin shadows that you build up in light layers. Uh, I actually had to draw in some of these creases as uh, thick dark lines towards the end because if they weren't being picked up when I shrunk my avatar down but um, if I was to keep the portrait full size I certainly would have been a little bit more careful about drawing those creases in. But apart from those tips I'm not really sure how much advice I can really give because I don't really feel very experienced on uh, human portraiture right now but um, I'd really like to dabble a bit more in human portraiture and perhaps I can get back with a more in-depth tutorial later on. But uh, for the rest of the video, I'll just explain, sorry, explain my process. So I'm not sure if this is going to come across obvious in the footage or not, but I really struggled with the hair. In my reference photo, uh, my hair is quite messy. Um, it usually is, to be honest, but um, I'm a fairly impatient artist and I really didn't want to spend an eternity trying to depict my hair super realistically. And it was probably just as well um, that I didn't because I don't think that drawing it super realistically would have been worth my time considering how small the icons would be. So what I did was I simplified it by drawing it in clumps and clusters. Unfortunately though, uh, to start off with, I had my clusters way too small and uh, too brightly contrasting. So as a result my hair looked kind of um, unkempt and greasy. So I ended up blending a lot of this out off camera again unfortunately, uh, using odourless mineral spirits or paint thinners uh, which helped to unify a lot of these individual strands and then I went back over the top with some darker colours to add a little bit more dimension and form. I've decided that I should really try and force myself to practice drawing lots of long hair because I feel really unpractised at it and I find it quite frustrating. And this is simply because I'm not used to drawing it so the more I draw it I'm sure the better I'll get at it and the more comfortable I'll feel drawing it. 
I think the last time that I draw, I, I drew um, long hair was probably about four years ago. So yeah, it's definitely something that I need to do a little bit more often, I think. And I'm definitely more used to drawing short or medium length hair on animals. I ended up editing my picture quite a bit after I scanned it in. Um, I primarily hyped up the contrast and I increased the saturation of the background, but I also blended out the skin a little bit more because of there were a few blemishes and other things um, that I wasn't particularly keen on. So here's my finished piece and you may have already seen it by now as my new avatar here on YouTube and also on my other social media. I'd love to hear about your experiences if you've ever drawn a self-portrait. Uh, what did you find challenging or what did you find easier than you first anticipated? I hope that you found this video helpful and interesting. Give it a like if you did. If you'd like to see more tutorials, reviews, speed paints and challenges, be sure to subscribe. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next week.